Hi, this is Randy, and this is part two of our, our project on replacing the default SSL certificate on your ESXi server. So in part two, we're going to actually get to the work. So what I've done here is I've opened up a connection. And first of all, I've, I've remoted into uh, to the lab, and I, I've opened, I'm opening up now a connection, a run box, and I'm navigating over to storage server one or SAN one. From there, I go into the ISO folder, and there we'll see the SSL certificates folder. So this is the current one. This is just old ones. I, I don't know. I just keep copy. So here's those two files I talked about. Now on that one right there, I'm not seeing the, the extension. So what I need to do is I need to see that CRT file. I need to see that. There we go. I need to see that. Okay, so I'm going to take a copy of those. This should be read only for you, so you shouldn't be able to write to this folder. So I'm going to bring a copy over to, to my downloads folder. This is my local PC, my downloads folder, and I'm going to go ahead and paste them in there. And then I'm just going to rename them. Okay, rui.key. And RUI.cert. All right, that's good for, for the first couple of steps. So I'm going to pause the video. Next thing that I'll be is I'll be over on my ESXi server. And I'm going to go through the processes of putting it in maintenance mode and enabling SSH. Now, again, because I haven't uh, put the certificate on it, I'm still having to connect to it by this. And again, we don't have IPv6 set up yet. And the only account we have is the root account. Okay. To put the server into maintenance mode, you come up here to host and you right click and you say enter maintenance mode. This is a visual indicator. It's really a good good indicator because once it's in maintenance mode, you, you really can't do much configuration on the server. And sometimes I forget. And so having this, uh, this icon change here is a good reminder for us that it's in maintenance mode. You can't, you can't do stuff with the data stores. You can't do stuff with the networking. You can't create virtuals. You can't do a bunch of stuff when it's in maintenance mode. Okay. To now enable SSH, then I, I click over here. I right click on manage. And I go down to services and I enable SSH. Okay. Okay. So that that's it. Sometimes I just double check. I there is a a banner that comes up to remind you when you're in SSH, but I don't see it here. I think we'll just see it on reboot. It'll come up and tell you. It's right with that same banner that says that we haven't licensed the server yet. So now that the server is in in uh, maintenance mode and that SSH is enabled, I need to next open my my SSH file transfer utility, and um, I'm going to use PuTTY. Excuse me, I'm not going to use PuTTY. I'm going to use Win Secure Copy. Okay. All right, I've opened Win Secure Copy. You can see here it's a great utility. We, we use it and, and we, we support them here in site. We, we donate to the project and I'm happy to do so. It's a great utility, become a, kind of a go-to tool in our industry. So over on the left side here, I'm, I'm in my downloads directory and I've got those two renamed files. And then what's gonna happen is I'm gonna open a new session and, a, and over here then I'm gonna navigate to Etsy forward slash Etsy forward slash VMware forward slash SSL and look for the existing RUI files. So let's go ahead and get that session going. I've pre-populated it here. Okay, I want you to see this. Whenever you first establish, whenever you establish the first SSH connection under a particular username, 
you're asked to accept a, a key. You may have already be familiar with this. I, as you know, I'm just one of, of three site instructors and in other courses, you may have already done this. This may be old news for you, but, but maybe not. Maybe not. So this is, this is normal. You only see this the first time. So I'm logging in as the root user and it's asking me to accept a, an encryption key uh, for that user, for this server, for whenever I SSH in. If I SSH in under a different user account, I will be prompted to accept a, a certificate for that user. It's a, it's a good thing. It's a, it's a good thing. Okay, so it prompted me for password and I gave it the password. If you need to navigate, if you're also using Win Secure Copy, if you need to navigate up and down the directory structure on the server, you can do that uh, up here. You can click and then same here, you can navigate. So over here, I've got my Windows machine and over here, I've got my ESXi server. The path that we're after then uh, over here, this is the, again the file system on the ESXi server, is we want to go to the Etsy directory, to VMware, and then to SSL. And you see the two files there? Those are, are the files that are defaulted when we install ESXi, but they're the certificates, as I mentioned before, they're not valid on, on the internet or through any web browser operating system. So what I need to do then is I need to copy these files over. And I am going to go ahead and, and override them this time. To verify that the copy was successful, we can look at for the date timestamp and see that the files have been updated. Let me just again show you about navigating here. We click here, we can work our way up. Okay, work our way up and back down. We'll also come in here in another project to uh, to do the patch, to apply the patch. So we'll be back. We'll do that through the PuTTY utility as opposed to Win Secure Copy. Those are the two utilities. If you're wondering, if you're doing this from home, uh, the two utilities that we use are, are um, PuTTY and Win Secure Copy, and, that, and that's it. With those two utilities, we've got everything covered as far as working with ESXi. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna, gonna close, close PuTTY, excuse me, close uh, Win Secure Copy, and I'm gonna take my server out of maintenance mode. And I'm gonna reboot it. Now, after it reboots, then I'm gonna to need to go and test and verify the certificate. As I mentioned, you have to, sometimes, usually actually, you have to close the web browser, open the web browser. You have to play with it a little bit uh, in order for the, the cache in the browser to get updated. So I'm gonna, Going to pause the video and let I let my server reboot and kind of get that playing around squared away and then I'll check back with you. This is the screenshot that I'm going to be asking you for. Actually, this is this is the exact screenshot I'm going to be asking you for. And what we're looking for here, first of all, we're looking for that we don't no longer have the error message and you need to use your fully qualified domain name. And this will work from either if you're moded into the lab or if you're doing this from the internet. Okay. And we then click on that and we go to the details of the certificate and we can see here that it's valid until April, April 4th. It's a 90-day, a 90-day certificate. These free certificates we get are 90-day are and you can see that it's a wildcard certificate. This is good stuff. It's good stuff. Also, if you're wondering how long did it take, you know, to reboot, Randy, uh, I, I honestly, I watched the clock and it took right at one minute. That's pretty quick. The installation is also pretty quick. I know I've got that video linked for you and it, you know, he stops and starts a video. The video, uh, the installation takes about certainly less than 10 minutes. And I would say on average about five minutes. The operating system itself is, is quite small. It's about 350 megabytes, pretty light operating system. It installs pretty quickly, reboots pretty quickly. So this is what we're after now. This is the goal of this project is this screenshot right here. So that's it. Yeah, good job, way to go. We'll continue on with, we've got a couple more projects uh, with this package. We wanna show you how to, to apply patching to patch your server, and then also how to create a user account for yourself. So yeah, way to go. I'll see you in the next uh, next project.